In this video, I'm going to be explaining exactly how Cover 4 Quarters works in Madden 21. This is very likely to continue to carry over into Madden 22. Some of the glitches and bugs that I'm going to break down in this video are really important to look out for as well. And we're going to show you kind of what you can do to be able to prepare for some of the things the offense can do to manipulate this coverage. What's going on guys? My name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel focuses in on helping people become the best Madden players they can become. And Madden 22 is right around the corner and our commitment to you is that we're going to upload a video every single day that can help you get better on offense and on defense in this game. Now, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And one of the things I wanted to highlight is my defensive encyclopedia. What my defensive encyclopedia is, is it is basically an encyclopedia of what everything does on defense. What does a seam flat zone do? What does a curl flat zone do? What does a hook curl do? What does the zone drops do to all of those zones? And we really took a deep dive into that over the course of the last year. And we're going to continue to add that. That's going to be an ongoing resource that we provide to you. So I'm going to leave a link to that down in the description. If you want to get it, it's a one-time purchase of $15. And it will actually continue to update for every Madden um, in the future. So a really good deal for you, in my opinion. So be sure to capitalize on that offer. All right, guys. So what we're talking about today is we're talking about the Cover 4 quarter zone I want to first show you my coaching adjustments you're going to see here that my zone drops are set to default and the reason why is because I want to show how this cover four quarters match coverage works so we're just going to go to big nickel over G this is the defense that I'm planning on running at least day one of Madden 22 um, as we get in the lab but this is I wrote a guide on this towards the end of Madden 21 and it's actually planning to be even better in Madden 22 primarily because not only is this really good against the run it's also really good against the pass and you can also blitz really, really well out of this formation. So cover four quarters is the play that we're going to be going over. And on offense, um, what I wanted to do first is I just wanted to kind of explain uh, what this looks like. And I wanted to show this via this trips uh, halfback weak formation. Uh, and I'm just going to pick the play curls. So what you're going to see here from this formation or from this play is cover four quarters is a way of defending primarily it's it's good against two by two sets but it's really good against three by one sets what i mean by three by one sets is we have three wide receivers set to the right side and one wide receiver set to the left side so on the outside here i just want to kind of explain what each zone goes from the outside to the inside and the outside quarter zone so what an outside quarter zone does in match coverage um, is on the trip side of the field we're going to start on the trip side is it is examining and asking the question is the first receiver on the right which would be the circle receiver that would be the number one receiver to the right it's asking the question does that receiver go vertical if the answer is yes then he will basically match that vertical route now what does it mean for a receiver to go vertical this is a really important point we're actually going to come back to that in just a second but in essence a vertical route could be something like a curl something like a streak something like a slant, something like an out. And this is where it really does cause some friction for this defense because this out route, this five yard out route is actually considered a vertical route. Why? Because he takes five steps vertical. As long as a receiver takes five steps vertical, um, this is gonna work. The same thing with a slant, it actually takes about three to five steps, but basically the rule of thumb in my opinion is three to five steps vertical means it's a vertical route. But if he runs a drag, then you'll see that that's not considered a vertical route. So at that point, what this what this um, or this uh, outside quarter is going to ask is, okay, number one didn't go vertical, so does number two go vertical? So if the number two goes, which number two would be Scotty Miller, if number two goes on a corner, then the number one or um, then, this, then this outside quarter to Davis is going to take him vertical. So he's going to match onto the corner. And this is why this is such a good defense, primarily for corner routes. It's a really good defense for outside breaking patterns, like corner routes to the slot, um, because oftentimes they don't send the circle receiver vertical. And if they do send the circle receiver vertical and they defend or send the second receiver vertical, so something like that, that's where we come to this outside or this uh, quarter flat defender. So the quarter flat defender is basically going to sit there and say, okay, uh, that does not necessarily does number two go vertical, but is there a flat route on the field? If not, then I'm gonna match a corner route. 
Now, if you take a look at this guy right here, he's really defending and responsible for number two. So if number two goes vertical, this guy is going to match him in man-to-man, -man, this inside quarter zone. This receiver right here is playing a rule of thumb that we call poach. Um, and basically what that means is, and this is why this is so good for three wide receiver sets, because it basically becomes a numbers game. And the numbers game uh, essentially says if the number three receiver, which is the X, if he goes vertical, then this guy is going to take him. So what that practically looks like is if I send three people on streaks, watch what happens from that left side quarter zone you're gonna see that that left side inside quarter zone is gonna go defend the X receiver. You see right there, if I try to throw to X, he defends him and takes it away. So that's kind of the idea behind this. Now, again, remember, it's really important to remember through this, a vertical route is a route that is, that is five yards vertical. Five steps vertical and then a cut. So a slant, is a vertical, an out is a vertical, an in is a vertical, a drag, not a vertical, smoke screen, not a vertical, zig route, not a vertical, okay, flat route, not a vertical. Those are really important to remember. Now, when defending three by one from cover four quarters, what you're going to see is this guy rolls over, and so we have a really great numbers advantage to the side of the field. If you take a look and just count, we have three wide receivers and they're gonna be defended by uh, five defensive uh, players. But on the left side, and this is where it gets interesting, essentially what's going to happen is Dean is going to actually play man-to-man -man coverage on Mike Evans, and then Whitehead is gonna be playing man-to-man -man on the back. So if I were to run a slant and a wheel, I want you to watch what happens. You'll see here the slant gets matched on the left, and the wheel gets taken by that route right there. Remember, they are starting in zone and they're converting into man, but um, if they're in a situation like this, this is a very good example for gun bunch because gun bunch is essentially the same rules as trips, uh, HB week. And what happens is you're gonna see that what the, really the, I think the secret formula um, for beating quarters is using this slant route. And the reason why I say that is because you're gonna have to press to stop this slant route. And oftentimes you're not gonna be able to, even if you do press, you're gonna see he's man to man. I can throw that ball instantly and manipulate that coverage. So one little pro tip in my personal opinion for defending this coverage is to allow yourself to have one additional defender to the left. And the way that we can accomplish that because it, the, really the big question is who do you use her in cover four quarters? Well, my answer, some people like to use her this guy because he's the guy that doesn't always do what he's supposed to do, okay? He's the guy that can get a little bit manipulated from time to time. But my personal um, opinion, I personally like to use her this guy. So I'll bring him right in here. And now what we're gonna do, and this is really important, is if you take a three rec off the field, you need to put it back on the field. So we're gonna put a bluff blitz to Shaq Barrett. And now that route combination that was originally a problem, now I can help on it and kind of take that away. And as you see, we're still able to take away crossers. We're still able to take away all the vertical routes. So let's talk about this three rec defender and explain this zone coverage. Um, you might've seen this. This is probably one of the, a lot of uh, pro players will tell you that this is the glitchiest zone in Madden. Um, it is the glitchiest zone in Madden, but most people don't understand how it actually works in Madden. Um, what a three rec means is three receiver hook. So what that means is whichever side has three receivers, he's going to open up to. Obviously, as an offense, you're going to have five receiving threats on every play. So that three receiver hook is always going to open up to the three receiver side. So in this example, you're going to see that there's three receivers to the right and two receivers to the left. So that three receiver hook should always go to this slot defender or slot receiver the first thing. You'll see right here, it goes to the slot, climbs vertical, and then you'll see here he passes it off to the quarter zone. And this is why match defense is so good. Match defense is so good because not only does it give the opponent something different than they're not expecting, but it also is so good because the defenders pass receivers off as they pass into different zones as you just saw right there, which allows them to defend a combination like what we just showed you. Because if I run this, watch this three receiver hook. 
He's going to pass off, and then look where he goes. He goes right back down to the drag and is able to make a quick tackle. Now, um, I want you to watch the hot-routed version of a three-receiver hook, which is the bluff blitz. So all I'm going to do with David here is I'm just going to blitz him, and then I'm going to put Barrett on a bluff blitz just so you can see what it looks like. And we're going to run the same exact combination. That right there. And I want you to watch Barrett climb, and then watch him release. See how he's in the perfect position to defend the slant. That is why three receiver hooks are so good. Now, I want to show you one other thing about this. What if you put the three receiver hook side on this side? So Pierre Paul is on a bluff blitz, and watch he's on a three receiver hook. Watch what he does at the snap of the ball. Just watch where he turns his hips. Snap the ball, and look, he's going to open up, and he actually matches the running back. Now, this is a really important point to understand. The three receiver hook, in my personal opinion, if you put that three receiver hook to the right, which quarters will do naturally because of the auto flip, he'll open up. Let me just show you what I mean. So I'm going to flip this play. And I'm actually going to base align so you can see this. Watch this left side middle linebacker. See him open to the right. Okay. But on the defensive line with the hot rider version, it's a little bit different. Why? Because it's technically a bluff blitz adjustment, meaning they're going to jab and then they're going to jump back in coverage. So you'll see here if the running back's on a route, obviously that three receiver hook recognizes that he's on a route. Now let me show you what happens if I um, do the, that adjustment to the defensive tackle. See how he does it again? Left side grid, he's going to defend left side. So that's more of a defensive line rule and something that you need to pay attention to. Why? Because you can actually um, do some interesting things. You could actually, in theory, use two three receiver hooks. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So what I could do, if I wanted to play some interesting defense, I could play two three receiver hooks on this play, even though it looks like they're going to the same place. Watch what happens at the snap of the ball. They're going to go to two completely different places and defend different parts of the field. To me, that is a huge point because... Again, three receiver hooks are widely considered the glitchiest zone in Madden. Now, for sake of this video, I want to just show you what happens if the running back goes on an option route. So let's say that running back goes on an option route. Snap the ball, watch that three receiver hook match him, and you see that what the three receiver hook does when it's to the running back side is oftentimes if the running back goes on a route, the three receiver hook takes him. This is a really important point and something we can actually use in a lot of different situations. For example, and this is where I come in and say, I really, you can actually have three or three or two three receiver hooks. So watch what I'm gonna do now. If I wanna get that numbers advantage to the trip side, I'm gonna take Whitehead and I'm gonna put him on a blitz. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take that square receiver or um, that defensive end on the running back side and I'm gonna put him into a bluff blitz. So he goes into the three receiver hook and watch what happens. He takes the running back, and now I'm over here to poach, and look at how good that coverage is. Look at how good. And that's from a defensive end. That's not even a linebacker defensive end, which would be my advice. If you're running this, put a linebacker defensive end. This is a great little pro tip, in my opinion, to using this match, because what it does is it gets you a plus one on the trip side of the field. Now what you can do with this, and what I like to do with this, is I've got two three receiver hooks from my defensive line, and then I'm going to take this middle linebacker, and I'm going to man him up on somebody over here on the right, and typically that person is a circle receiver. I find the circle receiver to be the biggest challenge um, when defending this, and this route combination that I'm about to show you to be the hardest to stop, because that out route is considered a vertical route. But when you do this adjustment, watch what happens to the corner. You see right here we match, everything goes perfectly, and watch that quarter flat defender get out there and actually force that to the boundary and run it out of bounds. Real simple, but real effective. So now what I wanna do is I just wanna spend the last couple of minutes talking about two by two. Um, two by two is completely, I think, much more simpler uh, for the defense to defend than three by one. Uh, three by one can, I think, just manipulate the coverage a little bit. But real simple, um, and real simple pro tip, and this is just my opinion, but when you're in this right here, this is two by two, um, again, you gotta figure out who you're gonna use her, right? You gotta figure out who you're gonna use her. Now on this example, I tend to, again, like to use two three receiver hooks. 
So what I'm going to do is to the running back, I put I just put both defensive ends on three receiver hooks. That's it. That's my adjustment. And watch what happens. Watch how this thing just absolutely matches and look at the coverage. Just take away these post routes. One of the hardest things to stop, um, in my opinion, out of spread is this, uh, this little combination right here that I'm about to show you. Um, and that is to basically take, do something like this. And watch the running back. Um, essentially, he'll just completely glitch out the match, just like that, and gets over the top for a one-play touchdown. Real simple and real easy way to beat and manipulate cover four quarters. So what you could do as a defense, though, is kind of hedge them off a little bit and say, okay, I want my running back, that running back taken in man coverage. So real simple, I just put two three-receiver hooks out there. Now, if the running back doesn't go on a route, then the three-receiver hook will just open up and play a hook zone. But now, that same route combination that gave us a little bit of trouble, I'm now free to help on, but watch that. See how that defensive end just takes him man-to-man? -man? And again, if that's a linebacker with a little bit better speed, he's going to play that zone even better. So I would not underestimate the power of two three-receiver hooks. Um, real quick, the double post or the curl, post-curl. Um, this is why I like to be using in the middle of the field on this play. So if you're defending spread, this is my favorite way to defend it. Um, the reason why is because I'm kind of sitting here, and if I see this, if I see that they need help over the top, I can take it. But look at how the quarters just takes this away. Um, curl post is one of the best concepts, um, especially if you take that running back and put him on something as well. But when we use these two three-receiver hooks, this is such a good adjustment out of the quarters. And watch what this does. He goes man-to-man, -man, that quarter flat is now free to help and everyone works together to play defense. So this coverage, I would guarantee you, in Madden 22, you're going to need to use this some. Rollout corners are going to be really effective in Madden 22. This defense, by and large, will take away rollout corners. Really want to encourage you to test out the 2-3 receiver hook theory. Um, I think it's actually something that's really unique. And I think it's something that's going to continue to be effective in Madden and Madden 22. So check it out. But when you put a three receiver hook or a, what I mean by three receiver hook is a bluff blitz. Um, so when you put your defensive end on a bluff blitz to the running back side, he's going to basically, if the running back goes on a route, he's going to match him. I want to show real quick what happens if the running back doesn't. Watch what he does. He'll just, he'll just come down. Essentially, he just comes down. Now, I didn't pass commit. Let me pass commit just to show um, and kind of articulate this a little bit better because I didn't pass commit on this. So let me just pass commit here. And I want you to see how these three receiver hooks uh, play. So I'm pass committing, snap the ball, watch this guy, see how he comes down even, and look at the look at these three receiver hooks just working, just working. So he basically is, is man-matched onto the running back. Um, another little thing that you can do if you wanted to um, is you could just simply man him up on the running back. So you see right here, the reason why you might do that is if the running back goes, um, if, you know, he like you saw right there, he blitzed, occasionally he'll drift into a spy. So anyways, that's cover four quarters. Um, that's how I like to run it. Um, I think this two, three receiver hook theory is really effective. You can also use just manning up on the running back. But what this does is it gives you an additional defender to defend to the trip side, which opens up a lot of possibilities for your defense. Thanks for watching. This has been the cover four quarters. If you want to get my uh, defensive encyclopedia where we actually break down every single zone adjustment in the Madden in the game, um, then you can get that down in the description. It's a one-time purchase, and we're going to continue to break that down over the course of the coming years. Thanks for your support, and thanks for your time. If you want to get that guide, it is linked down in the description.